Hello guys, my name is Nikita Machavin and I am a concert jazz musician. My main instrument is saxophone, but also I play piano a lot. And today I want to share with you information about what jazz harmony is and what it is based on. Harmony is an important component of music generally, on the par with the rhythm, with the melody and many others. The most well-known way of understanding organization and using harmony is its division into a classical and jazz harmony, and they differ significantly in their laws of organization and sound. Jazz harmony came out from classical and differs from it on the first place by the simplified rules of connection between two different chords, or more correct to say, harmonic functions, and uh, simplified rules of connection, harmony with the melody. Jazz harmony is based on the seventh chords, and these chords are based on the triads, and as well as the triads, they are built on a different steps of scale or mode, and they have seventh in their structure. It means seventh step of a scale, which gives to a chord a certain specific color. The seventh might be um, major and minor, or rarely augmented and diminished. There are five main types of seven chords, and now I will finally show you them on the piano and will teach you how you can build it and play it. So, the first one called major seventh chord, and it sounds like this. Second one is dominant seven. It sounds like this. Third one is minor seven. Then we have half diminished seven chord. And finally diminished chord. Now, when I have already knew the names of these chords and how they sound, let's study the structure of each of these chords. Major 7th chord is based on a major triad, but we need to add the 7th, which is a major 3rd above the 5th, and also the 7th step of a major scale. Dominant 7th chord is also based on a major triad, but has a minor 7th in his structure, which is a minor 3rd above the 5th. Minor 7th chord is built on a basis of minor triad, and also has a minor 7th, which is the 7th step of a minor scale. Half diminished chord consists of diminished triad and a minor seventh, which is a major third above the fifth. And diminished chord consists of diminished triad and diminished sevenths, which is a minor third above the fifth. In other words, diminished chord consists of three minor thirds. Now I will show you a couple of simple ways how you can play these chords on piano with both hands. So the left hand playing tonic in the bass and the right hand playing whole seventh chord from tonic. Let's play all types like this. In the second variation, we will also play tonic in the bass, but the right hand will play only the third and the seventh of the chord, like this. But this rule will work only with the major, minor and dominant seven chords. This happens because the third and the seventh are the main steps of these chords. The third shows us is this chord minor or major, 
and the seventh defines type of our seventh chords. And here is the major seventh, and here is the minor seventh. But when we play half diminished and diminished chords, we must also add the fifth because it is the flat five step and it gives us a certain sound of a diminished triad, which is the basis of the seventh chord. Now let's play all five types like I've just said. The F major, F dominant seven, F minor seven, here is F half diminished with the fifth and F diminished with the fifth also. Now it's time for the last part of our lesson. We will try to uh, put our new fresh knowledge into practice and play the F major blues. We will play it two times. The first time we will play it like in the first example when we played um, the bass in the left hand and the full seventh chord from the tonic in the right hand. But the second time we will play it using inversions because they will help us more smoothly uh, connect different seventh chords with each other. We will play with a metronome and all chords are played from tonic. As you can see, it's a very inconvenient way to play, because you are bouncing from chord to chord, like this, and it sounds jerky. That's why we will try to play this progression using inversions. I think it's enough for today. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and found something interesting, useful and new for you. So this is my first video lesson, but I'm going to carry on. Therefore, practice and practice. Always look for something new and interesting and stay tuned. Goodbye.